Hello, I'm Ron Wilson and welcome back to PD Sessions. The cost of living for Australian retirees has risen further, with couples looking to have a comfortable retirement needing a joint superannuation balance of around $510,000. In international news, consumer confidence has improved in the US, while anti-EU parties have made huge gains in the European Parliament elections. In other news, the federal budget for 2014-15 has been delivered, and financial advisers who provide tax advice must now register with the Tax Practitioners Board. Trevor Trahan has the details. Annual expenditure required for Australian retirees to have a comfortable or even modest retirement have risen further. In the March quarter, the expenditure required for couples wanting to live a comfortable retirement rose by 0.3% to $57,817 per annum. Achieving this level of income would require a joint superannuation balance of around $510,000. Couples seeking a modest retirement lifestyle will need to spend $33,509 per annum, up 0.5% from the previous quarter. In its June meeting, the RBA again decided to leave the official cash rate on hold at 2.5%, citing that monetary policy is appropriately configured for the current economic climate. RBA Governor Glenn Stevens commented that growth in the global economy is continuing at a moderate pace, assisted by very accommodative financial conditions overall. While Australians have historically been good at paying back their mortgages quickly, a report by Fitch Ratings suggests this repayment rate is stagnating. Fitch's report monitored Australian repayment rates in securitised prime mortgages and found a stalled housing market and a non-competitive lending environment are major threats to Australian mortgage payment rates. Looking to international news, Narendra Modi is India's new Prime Minister and his election win has created hope that he can improve the ailing fortunes of Asia's third largest economy. In India, growth has been languishing below 5%, but the prospect of a government led by Modi has boosted Indian stocks by 15% up to the end of May this year. The rupee has benefited too, gaining 6% against the US dollar after a poor 2013. Consumer confidence has improved in the US as it recovers from a cold winter, which adversely affected its economic performance. Global Independent Business Membership and Research Association, the Conference Board, reported that its Consumer Confidence Index now stands at 83.0, up from 81.7 in April. The Present Situation Index increased to 80.4 from 78.5, while the Expectations Index edged up to 84.8 from 83.9 in April. Elections for the European Parliament witnessed the region's anti-EU parties make substantial gains and win overall in several major countries. The biggest victories were in the UK, France and Denmark, where stridently anti-EU parties, the UK Independence Party, France's National Front, and the Danish People's Party all topped the polls ahead of their country's governments and other major parties. Many of the anti-EU parties want to leave the EU and form free trade deals with former partners. Further, with nearly 20 million people unemployed in the Eurozone, they also want to enforce tighter controls on immigration. In domestic news, some of the key changes announced in the 2014-15 federal budget delivered by Treasurer Joe Hockey include the government will amend the timetable for increasing the SG rate to 12%. However, the next increase in the SG rate from 9.25% to 9.5% will still occur on 1 July 2014. The government will introduce a three-year temporary levy known as the Temporary Budget Repair Levy, applying from 1 July 2014 until 30 June 2017. This level applies at a rate of 2% on an individual's taxable income in excess of $180,000 per annum. From 1 July 2025, the age pension qualifying age will continue to rise by six months every two years, from the qualifying age of 67 years that will apply by that time, to gradually reach a qualifying age of 70 years by 1 July 2035. The government will maintain the current Family Tax Benefit, or FTB, payment rates for the two years from 1 July 2014. Under this measure, indexation of the maximum and base rates of FTB Part A and the rate of FTB Part B will be paused until 1 July 2016. The government will reduce the income threshold for repayment of Higher Education Loan Program or HELP debts commencing in 2016-17. 
and will adjust the indexation of help debts from 1 June 2016. A new minimum threshold will be established for the repayment of help debts, set at 90% of the minimum threshold that would otherwise have applied in 2016-17. ASIC has released a report assessing the ways companies and their advisors handle confidential information. Key points from Report 393, Handling of Confidential Information, Briefings and Unannounced Corporate Transactions, include Listed entities must take responsibility for the management of their confidential information. Poor practices can negatively affect reputation, jeopardise the success of a transaction and may lead to ASIC action. And future ASIC work includes a targeted review of research reports by analysts and a continued enforcement focus on insider trading and listed entities that fail to comply with continuous disclosure laws. Under the terms of the Tax Agent Services Act 2009, or TASA, financial advisors who provide tax financial advice in the course of their dealings with clients must register with the Tax Practitioners Board, or TPB. The notification period for registration began on 1 July 2014 and ends on 31 December 2015. During this time, AFS licensees and their authorised representatives who provide tax advice services will need to either notify the TPB to become registered as a tax financial advisor, or if not, use a relevant disclaimer when they provide tax financial advice services for a fee or other reward. Australia's superannuation assets are worth $1.84 trillion, according to APRA's March 2014 quarterly superannuation performance report. Total estimated assets, which includes the assets of SMSFs and the balance of life office statutory funds, rose to $1.84 trillion at 31 March 2014. This represented a rise of 1.6% in total superannuation assets over the March quarter, while for the 12 months to March 2014, there was a 16.8% increase in total superannuation assets.